Wow, I just saw someone running into his house, you know, swerving in the car, uh, you know, drifting in his uh, driveway, uh, you know, rushing to his living room, turning the TV on to IA's TV through to, three to watch his favorite late night show, hashtag LNT. And I just like to say salamu alaikum to everyone because, you know, you guys are the real heroes out there, you know, keeping this show running. Uh, I'd just like to say one thing. I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 86 of your favorite show with your favorite man, Ahmed Ali. Now, tonight is September 5th. Say, wallah. Tonight is September, is it? Tonight is September 5th. And if you don't know what happened or what this day represents, you got to go check it out. Go on Google, write, what is September 5th? What is this day affiliated with? Until then, let's go check out what's trending and come back to you guys very short. Once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Although the first headline is a bit, um, you know, dreadful. But man, what's going on in Basra? At least five protesters killed, 30 injured. Why? Because they're demanding the simplest thing in life. They're demanding the essence of life, actually. They're demanding water, you know, fresh water to drink. Now, Basra gets its water from Shat al-Arab. If you don't know where that is, that, that's near Kuwait. It's on the border of Kuwait where the, uh, the Tigris and the Euphrates River meet. Now, on August 28, a statement uh, from the High Commission of Human Rights said, it has found high levels of salinity uh, in the water feeding the Shat al-Arab and an increase of chemical and biological uh, containments from sewage contaminants uh, and sewage and industrial waste. And, you know, people of Basra is one of the largest provinces in Iraq. And trust me when I say, when it's, the, it's one of the largest, that means it has one of the most packed cities in Iraq. Thousands, thousands um, have been reported to hospitals for, for um, you know, poisoning and stuff because of the water. Now, chemicals and, and, and biological contaminants being in water is very dangerous. Um, so trust me when I say this, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a big thing here in Iraq. Protests have been going on just, you know, wanting and demanding simple right for fresh water. Um, so our prayers do go for those in Basra, inshallah, everything will be resolved soon. Now for those, the second headline, for those who actually are following up with what's going on in the money business, you know, in the money world, Amazon, market cap, one trillion dollars. Yeah, and that's, that's all I should say. One trillion dollars. You know, now it's the second largest uh, or second publicly known U.S. company to reach the, the record valuation of one trillion dollars you know, after Apple. You know, but amazing, amazing. You know, we, we, we just a few episodes ago, you know, it's, it's episode 86. And I believe in episode, uh, we were talking about wealth versus, versus knowledge. And we're talking about how Bezos was 119 billion dollars rich. Now the company is worth one trillion dollars so imagine and and actually do you know how much one trillion dollars is if you don't know well, the cameraman uh alush presley he, he's he's saying yeah uh but um but I, let's actually see how much one trillion dollars is show us ali jasim hit it so right there as you can see that's one million dollars the small pouch right there man standing right there, he's chilling and then there's a hundred million dollars, one billion dollars, you have some racks going on, and then that one trillion is at the bottom. A whole field, that little guy, that little circle, red circle at the end, yeah, that's a guy, and that's how, many, how much one trillion dollars is. So he just, I don't know, you can legit rebuild the whole world with that money. Uh, but, you know, people are rich, and the US is in debt for 12 trillion dollars, 10 trillion dollars, turn around that. So imagine how life could be with that money. And tonight, we're talking about money. So let's go jump into tonight's topic real quick. Break. In this world and nowadays, we see everyone working hard, including Ali Jassim, just to get that cash, you know, to, 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 to get famous, to get a house, to get a car. You know, all these are beautiful. You know, in life, one of the most beautiful things in life is to strive for a better living. And that's the dream of everyone. 
Yet, there's one thing. Notice before I said anything, there was the word get before it. Get cash, get famous, get a house, get a car. You know, we humans always want to get, but we rarely actually give. And that's unfortunate. You know, hardly do we give. Today, as I mentioned in the intro, today is September 11th, so, 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 so September 5th, my bad, September 5th. And according to the UN International Calendar, today is set as the International Day for Charity. Now, charity, as we all know, is all about giving and, uh, you know, and, and giving to organizations. However, we thought to dedicate this whole episode about you guys tonight on how charity and inshallah, you know, you get those big bucks out and you start giving away, uh, making it rain. Anyways, tonight's question is very, very simple. Very simple. Let's pop it up in three, two, one. Wow, mashallah, guys are on point. What is the purpose of charitable organizations? Simple question. Very simple question. What is the purpose of charitable organization? If you're wondering what you do with that question, very simple. On Instagram, I already wrote that. Uh, you open your phone, go to WhatsApp, dial the number shown, uh, inshallah, in a few seconds. It's a bit lagging. Um, plus 964-774-067-1836. And let us know what you think via WhatsApp, toll free. Uh, everyone has Wi-Fi, everyone has data, so open WhatsApp. Shoot us a text message, a voice message, and a free phone call during the live show tonight. Now let's go take a quick break and come back to you guys to talk more about charity and giving. Once again, welcome everyone joining us tonight uh, in the live show from the holy city of Karbala. Now tonight, as I uh, said earlier, as I mentioned earlier, the question for tonight is very simple. What is the purpose of charitable organizations now it's, it's it's a very important question to actually think about uh, because uh, in the world we, that we live in today we'll get to talk about it later on but the world that we're living in really needs a lot of help no matter how many improvements uh, we have made to general living standards we haven't reached every part of the world what we usually take for granted is someone else's struggle and somewhere around the world. Someone struggling just to get fresh water, just like in the people of Batala. Someone struggling just to get, you know, some communi communi communication with his maybe brother in, 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 in the States or somewhere around the world. People lack simple living standards and simple uh, things in life. Charity is one of the best ways that can help such people. Most of the time, charity is in financial terms. However, tonight, we're trying to find out other ways on how to um, become charitable and uh, donate to charities, uh, as well as depending, uh, and it has to depend on the target that you're looking into. So that's why we have six ways for you as to why you should donate to charity. Number one, improving self-worth. That's number one. What does that mean? You know, donating is something that makes us feel really good, as that person right there, makes us feel amazing. It's a satisfactory state that a person goes through. Most people find helping underprivileged individuals as one of their main purposes in life. The second one is giving back. As I mentioned earlier, we all give, so we all take. You know, I want to take that cash, I want to get that car, I want to get, 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 it's amazing. You know, for me, I would like to get a Lamborghini, and that's mine. You know, I'd like to get this kind of house, this kind of... It's all good. You know, it's, it's beautiful. But at the same time, do we actually think about what we give? Do we think about how much we give? And that's important as well. And that's number two. Number three is spreading the love. And that goes along with number two as well. M many people, we can say that 90% of the people living on this planet want to get love. At the same time, you got to give love to get it back. So two and three are, are, are connected with one another. You know, we're so, everyone's such a victim and has become a victim of materialism that everybody 
is craving, that no one right now is, is really craving love. You know, even the love that people crave right now, some people crave, unfortunately, is materialistic love. You know, it's, it's not pure love that was, you know, you find like Indian movies where they run around trees and stuff. You know, it's, it's, I'm kidding, those are movies. But what I'm trying to say is that we live in such a materialistic world that no one's actually giving, no one's actually caring uh, about giving love to get it back. Everyone's ex just expecting everyone to love them just like that instead of giving uh, something back to the community. Number four is gratefulness. You know, as we mentioned earlier, one of the most aspects, one of the most uh, things in life um, is, that, is, is the ones that we take for granted. You know, yes, in Karbala, electricity does go off, but there are cities and, and, and countries around the world where they barely have any electricity. They barely have cars, they barely have slippers. You know, it's, and, and we have to really think about that as well. It's a blessing, you know, you know the simplest blessings um, is to always give. Even if you have such minimum thing, you need to give it because trust me when I say it, it's going to multiply. Number five is socializing. You know, when you donate to charities or join non profitable organizations, you get, you get to find individuals um, like minded uh, for yourself. You get to socialize more. You get to form a group or be in a group where you can change the way that a lot of people are thinking nowadays. You know, have an impact on societies that really can't uh, flourish by themselves due to poverty and cancer sometimes. So we have to always keep in mind that you know, joining a group, joining a non-profitable organization can help a lot. Number six, join causes. It's similar to socializing and joining non-profitable organizations, but this one, your will to donate will help you discover organizations and causes they fight for. You know, there are a lot of organizations out there that are doing a lot of amazing work. A lot of amazing work. If you go to the West, you'll find a lot. You'll find the Zahra Trust. You'll find Lady Fatima Trust doing work, not just in Iraq, in Yemen, be, 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 because of uh, the war that's going on in Yemen. They're helping people in Lebanon, in Syria. You know, who is Hussein? A lot of charitable organizations, the, 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 the Tenth Day, also um, uh, helping a lot of people out there. You know, uh, and some of them are my boys. You know, we're, we're just giving shout outs, um, not to only our boys, but we're giving shout outs to their organizations as well, because they're actually giving back to the community, you know, for their work. It's amazing work uh, that they're doing. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, give them the will to continue serving the way. Now, charity does not have to be big or leave a huge impact it doesn't you know a little act of kindness of charity you know if you find someone that's sitting on the sidewalk and he has written a sign saying i haven't eaten for a few days and i trust me when i say i've seen someone said that i haven't eaten proper food for for, for more than two weeks Going to a, you know the the, the closest um, sandwich shop, you know even if you if, if you're not Muslim, you know go grab something from I don't know from from McDonald's or whatever, you know grab something even if it's halal, you know try to grab it halal, you know grab it and bring it to this individual. That simple, you know how much is going to cost you five dollars? Who doesn't have five dollars? Especially the Muslim community, mashallah, they're they're standing they're stacking up their their, their cash. You know, it's, it's good to go buy something, you know, even, you know, Dollarama nowadays has sandwiches. You know, uh, food basics, if in, in Canadians, my, my Canadian boys know that. Food basics, Fortinos and them. Go grab something very, you know, a small sandwich, some juice, some, some, some fruits. And it's not hard to find a homeless person. You'll find them anywhere in downtown. You know, anywhere you go downtown, you're going to find a homeless person. Especially downtown Toronto, you'll find a lot of homeless people. Go and help those individuals out. Simple act of kindness, you know, because one day you, you never know how harsh life can get. Now you're living great, you know, you're, 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 you're having 
a, a good time, you're having money, you have a good wife, a good family, everyone's happy, everyone has money. But God forbid something does go wrong and things don't work out properly. Put yourself in his shoes. Wouldn't you want the community to help you out? Wouldn't you want the society that you belong to help you out? That's what charity is. Simple act of kindness will help you a lot. And that's the theme for today, is helping others out. Now we all know that giving to charity and helping out is a very good deed, you know, it's, it's important. But what's the purpose of all this? What's the purpose of us giving back? You know, for example, I'll, I'll just, you know, bring this small example in. If you're in a relationship with someone, especially a halal relationship, let's keep that up, a halal relationship, and you only want your love to, you only want your wife to love you. You don't want to love your wife. Is you just want to get that love. You want to give it. But how is that going to make your wife love you even more? If you're the only one getting the love and not showing love, it's simple. You know, you, charity doesn't have to go to someone that's you know that's poor. People lack manners. People lack love. People lack food. People lack drink. You know, people lack a lot of things. So charity doesn't have to go to someone that, that's, 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 you know, doesn't have any... Uh, well, it should, it should. But the closest people to you, start with that and then you'll, you'll, you'll move on very far in life. Show kindness to those around you, you'll get far in life. Show kindness to everyone that you have. And if you, in, in last episode we talked about Imam al Kavim and how even in the most unpleasant situations where he's getting harassed, he showed kindness, he showed a smile. A smile can be charity for someone that's having a bad day in life. You know, for someone that's having a bad day, you open a, that simple door opener, you just open the door for that person and they walk through and they see you with that smile on your face, it's gonna change their day. They're gonna be like, you know what? There's good people out there. So try to do the, the, the simplest acts Try to do them, and trust me when I say, people will love you for that. You will actually become, and you know, because giving back, you know, as Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, whoever grants one, you know, one request of his brother or someone that requests something from him, Allah subhanahu wa taala will grant him six, seventy requests in this world and 70 requests in the hereafter. One request, if someone comes up to you, and nowadays a lot of people do need money, you know, and, and there's a lot of illnesses going on, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure those who are going through an illness. They come, they come up to you and you say, you know what, I, I, I need a, you know, a couple of bucks to get me through, through the month. Can you lend me some? And you know yourself that you have money. But sometimes you're afraid, is that person gonna, get, gonna pay me back? And not your right, absolutely. But you know that that individual is in, in, in deep trouble. You know that individual doesn't have any money or else he wouldn't come and, and, and you know, lower his, his self-esteem and, and, you know, and, uh, you know, not saving his face and stuff. You know, why lower that much just to get the buck so you know that he's in desperate need so just help him out that right there will make you a very successful person but let's take a very quick break and come back to you guys very short thank you very much i talked a lot you know alhamdulillah i have my prayer be today you know we're trying to you know uh, trying to uh, get my sins washed away so alhamdulillah I got my prayer bead going on uh, but before the break we were talking about how simplest things can actually change people's lives tonight uh, we want to highlight one special foundation one special um, organization out there uh, founded by Grand Ayatollah uh, Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi now this foundation this uh, organization is, uh, is actually very unique in its way where it's uh, the aim is to unite the males and the females of society 
together in a halal way, of course. Bringing the man and the woman to get married under one roof, having kids. They're trying to get people to, to, to get married. And that's actually very beautiful. Because nowadays, marriage is one of the most hectic things in life. You know, I'm not saying because, you know, to scare you guys, although you guys probably know more than me, but what I'm trying to say is nowadays, marriage, you need to think a lot for it. You know, now they're requesting a huge dowry, lots of gold. You know, if you're living in Iraq or somewhere in the Middle East, you're paying a lot for marriage. You know, now, in Iraq, the simplest marriage will cost you around eight to $15,000. Somewhere else, and that's in Iraq, and, and, and that's very high, you know, and uh, somewhere else, it's going to cost you around fifty dollars to $100,000 because you, have, you need a house, you need a car, you need a job, you know, all that. This foundation, th th this foundation is, uh, is actually trying to bring everyone together, trying to bring the male and the female together so everyone can live happily under one roof. Very wonderful initiative. Um, for me, um, I'm not saying I would have signed up, but you know, if someone is going to make a wife, I'm just kidding, my wife's watching the show. Uh, we don't want to get into problems with her. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. But, what we're trying to say, it's a very beautiful initiative. Uh, but we have uh, the spokesperson, the official spokesperson uh, of Imam Hussein Development and Relief Foundation, the IHDRF, joining us uh, live uh, during the show uh, via phone call. Um, Salamun alaikum. Salamun alaikum. Hello? Ah, so there are some technical issues, inshallah. We'll do try uh, again to get in contact with him. Uh, Sheikh Abbas Panju, the official spokesperson uh, of IHDRF. This is the organization called the IHDRF, Imam Hussein Development uh, and Relief Foundation. So, as I was mentioning earlier, inshallah, we can get to, uh, we do have a few minutes left. Then in the show, we can get to talk uh, with Sheikh Abbas soon, inshallah. Now, as I mentioned before the break, one of the most beautiful things um, in life is giving back more. Or we can weigh it out. Get and give. Get and give. At the end, there are technical difficulties, so we couldn't get in touch with Sheikh Abbas Panchu, inshallah, we'll do, we'll do have him in other episodes. Uh, but at the end, as a conclusion, what's your duty at the end? What's the answer for tonight's question? What's the purpose? Well, the purpose is, is, is very clear. The purpose is to have everyone on this planet live a peaceful life and in harmony. That's what the Ahlul Bayt wants. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, quality, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Quality, justice, equality, justice, quality of life too. Um, uh, a good living standard. Helping those who are in need. Going out to sea, you know, there are a lot of um, uh, villages out there that are undiscovered. And trust me, I've seen that with my own eyes here in Iraq. I had to go to a village to go check it out. And one of, of you know, uh, one of the most horrific things I've seen. Trust me when I say kids don't have underwears to wear. They're naked running around the streets. They're naked going around the house. No slippers on their feet, no shoes, bare clothes minimum clothes so imagine if everyone around the world was to come together donate very simple things and help those individuals out check your wallets you know check your bank account if you know that you have an extra 50 25 dollars which is nothing pay it out take it out giving to give it to an organization that you know give it to IHDRF if you have one that you trust and you've been working with and you know that your friends are working with, go pay into that. But as long as you have um, a small amount out for charity, that's our message for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Ahmed Ali coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala on hashtag LNT. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes and hint, hint, hint. In Muharram, inshallah, and Safar, there's going to be episodes every single night, 60 episodes. Uh, in two months, inshallah, that is going to be tough. But we got the man I just am writing the scripts and the man Ahmed Ali presenting them. Thank you very much for joining us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.